Hi everyone, this is Nigel Merrick, founder of the Xenolog Photography Business and Marketing website and welcome to the webinar. Today's topic is 7 ways to turn your about page into a client attraction magnet and we've got some great material to cover here for you. The humble about page might seem like a simple creature and it often gets overlooked as a major lead generation page on most websites which is a shame since it has a great deal of potential. So, to help give your about page the attention it deserves, I've got seven very simple things that you can do today to make your about page work harder for you. By the way, as we go through the content today, you might hear me mention things like the Prime Focus Mentoring Program. If you've not heard me talk about that in the past, Prime Focus is my membership-based coaching program where I personally help photographers implement online marketing strategies for their business through regular mastermind coaching calls. So, make yourself comfortable, eliminate as many distractions as possible and get ready to turn your about page into a client attraction magnet. So today's topic is actually pretty simple. After all, how complicated do about pages have to be really? Even so, it's amazing how many photographers mess this up, losing a great chance to connect with their ideal clients in the process. As simple as an about page sounds when you first think about it, there is no easy button and we still have to put some thought into creating an about page that works. So here's what we're going to be covering in this presentation today. To get started, we'll take a look at the big picture. Where does this fit into the grand scheme of our overall marketing plan? You might be surprised at just how big that picture is and how important the about page is to generating good leads for your business. Then we'll take a look at why about pages are important. Why do we need them and what are they actually for? The answers to these questions aren't the most obvious ones you might think of at first glance. Now, I don't really like the terms wrong and right when it comes to marketing since we're dealing with people and everyone is so different. Instead, we'll look at the old ways of doing things and then at some of the new ways we can put together an about page that may be more effective. Then we'll move straight into our seven ways to make the perfect about page. So here's the big picture that I mentioned earlier on. Online marketing, as you can see, is made up of a lot of pieces, rather like a jigsaw puzzle. And I know that you sometimes feel as though you're trying to assemble a puzzle without knowing how all the pieces really fit together. This diagram, of course, is highly simplified. Not only are all the pieces connected to each other in weird and interesting ways, but this in itself is not the whole picture. Online marketing is just a smaller piece of the much bigger picture that describes your entire business. It's really no wonder so many photographers have such a hard time trying to keep everything straight and in good working order while trying not to get overwhelmed by it all. But where does our topic for today fit into all of this? Well, obviously that would be in the website section and even then about pages are just a small part of the website section of the overall puzzle, which in turn has its own set of complex pieces to manage. The big picture therefore includes a large number of interconnected elements working together to support and amplify each other to help you attract more of your ideal clients and make more sales. But I know that this can sometimes feel a little daunting and present a significant challenge for some people. This is where a coaching program like Prime Focus can be highly valuable because it helps to keep the bigger picture in perspective at the same time as we're working on the individual pieces and it stops us from feeling as if we're stuck or working on it alone. So why focus on the humble about page? What's so important about it? Well, even though this is just a small part of the overall online marketing machine, if we remove it or cripple it in some way, then the machine itself either stops working or becomes much less efficient at doing its job, which as we know is to attract your ideal clients and make more money for your business. Since the About page is one of the most visited pages on our websites, a page that isn't doing its job efficiently is a bit like having your salespeople asleep at their desks. Prospects might come to the website, but then leave just as quickly without taking any action which means all the effort that went into attracting those visitors through social media marketing or search engine optimization is wasted. 
And if your website doesn't see that many daily visitors to begin with, every person who leaves without contacting you is another potential client walking out the door. Of all the pages you have on your website, this is the biggest chance you have of making a really meaningful connection with the right people, so it's got to be worth some time and effort to optimize its performance. For example, here we see a typical prospect looking for a photographer, scanning the about pages on all the websites she finds, but ends up feeling confused or unmotivated to take any action, so she heads back to Google to find alternatives. So let's take a look at where the problems might be. Here we have the typical about page, the, the kind of thing many photographers imagine an about page should look like. Usually there's a photo of the photographer on one side or the other with a generic about us heading followed by some kind of a bio. In the worst of cases this might be a very lengthy and detailed life story, most of which isn't all that relevant for the average prospect. It's also not uncommon to find very generic and meaningless statements such as I love photography, I have a passion for photographing people, or I have a great eye. Such statements might seem like the sort of thing that we should say, but as we'll see they're actually not as effective, effective as we might imagine. However, the one important word that's often missing from these pages is the word you, and we'll get to the importance of that in just a little while. More often than not, there's no objective for the page other than to tell the reader how much the photographer loves creating photographs. When you stop to think about it, isn't that something that every photographer should say? For example, it would be hard to imagine someone hiring a photographer who didn't love what they did or wasn't passionate about their art. After reading this type of About Us page, what do you think the prospect is going to do? What is the photographer really expecting to happen at this point? The hope, maybe, is that the person will pick up the phone and call the studio or maybe send in an email request for more information, but that doesn't happen very often relative to the number of times the page is viewed for reasons that we'll get to shortly. Most of the time, it's as if the prospect has reached a dead zone in the website, a point at which there's no clear path forward, so they're very likely to leave without doing anything. Fortunately, there's a way to help to stop that from happening. When we stop to think about what we're actually doing and the goals we're trying to achieve, especially if we look at, look at it like we see it here in this graphic, it's suddenly quite clear what the problem is with our approach. Remember, nobody likes the person at the party who talks about themselves incessantly, so why would it be any different on our About page? If all we ever talk about is ourselves, and how amazing we think we are, the reader is going to be left scratching their head and feeling kind of confused about how we can better serve them. The one big secret in turning this around is to first turn around the way that we think. Instead of an About Us page, we should really be creating an About Them page, and it's quite amazing how quickly our perspective changes when we start thinking like that instead of in the way we assume we should because that's the one that seems the most obvious. Remember, earlier I mentioned that the word you is missing from most photographers about pages. Well, this is why it's so important in making a great connection. As for the purpose of your about page, it should aim to answer at least five basic questions in the mind of the prospect. Why should they pay any attention? Have you established your credibility? If not, there's a great way to do that which I'll get to soon. Who is it by? You'd be amazed how many websites I visit where it's not actually clear who the photographer is or even where they're located. What's in it for them? How will the prospect really benefit from working with you as opposed to your local competition? What's the site about? Now, this is not such a great problem with photography websites, but it is worth restating the types of photography you offer, your services and your products. And why should they care? This is all about making that personal and emotional connection with the prospect and showing them how much you care about their needs and desires. Answer these important questions, especially in ways that evoke emotions, and you're well on the way to creating a great about page that can make a meaningful connection. 
So, are you ready to dive into our seven ways that we can use to turn your About page into a client attraction magnet? By the way, these are not in any particular order of importance, but the first one I have here is to identify with your reader by stating your shared values. This is your chance to talk to your new prospect in a way that makes a deep emotional connection and makes her realize that you're the photographer for her. For example, why is she looking for a photographer at this specific time? Why now? Show her you understand the various important reasons why people seek out the kind of photography that you offer. Do you understand any concerns that she might have about working with you? Depending on the type of photography you do, there will be concerns in her mind about whether or not you're the right choice. For example, if her children immediately turn into frozen statues or shy wallflowers in a strange environment, but you happen to offer a friendly in-home portrait service where the children would feel more at ease, this would be the time to mention it. Does she place the same importance on the value that photography brings to people's lives as you do? This factor alone will have a direct impact on how sensitive your prospects will be to your fees. If you place a high value on photography but your prospects don't, then it's likely there's going to be a disconnect there, and it will be harder to book them as a client, assuming of course that you want to work with them in the first place. In that sense, your About page can also act as a prospect filter, connecting with the people you want to serve, but sending away the ones who might not be a good fit for you, eliminating the wasted time you might have spent talking to them on the phone, only to learn that they're not your client. So next up is number two. And of course, you know, have you ever been to a party or a networking event and met that one annoying person everyone wants to escape from because the only thing they talk about is themselves? I'm sure you've experienced something like that and no doubt you'll agree that those kind of people rarely make a positive lasting impression on the people they come into contact with. As you can guess by now, your about page is a little like that networking event and the less you talk about yourself here the better off you'll be in the long run. That doesn't mean you can't communicate what it is that you do or the benefits that you have to offer just that there are better ways to do that one of which I'll explain when we get to item number six. For now focus on the reader first and yourself a distant second. One of the biggest reasons that people become dissatisfied with a product or a service happens when their expectations are not met or somehow shattered. And it really doesn't matter if you fail to provide any concrete expectations because the prospect will form their own expectations of you and your photography based on whatever information they can find about you and what they see other photographers doing in the industry. So make sure you give a clear idea of what she can expect from you not necessarily in terms of products, prices, or in other material ways, but more to do with the overall experience, the quality and level of service that you provide. Your About page is a chance to do this effectively and use it to show how you're different to the other photographers in the community at the same time, thereby communicating even more value. Moving on to number four, your About page is not like many of the other pages on your website. In fact, it has more in common with a sales page than a strict content page or a blog post. Remember, you're aiming to sell yourself here to your ideal clients, and so you don't want the page to be bogged down with the usual distractions that we might see on other areas of the website. For example, try to keep the number of links on the page to a bare minimum. By links, I'm talking about everything from navigation links to other parts of the website, social media channels, or even links to other websites. Any links that you do have on this page should open up the destination in a new browser tab, leaving your About page still open in its own browser window, which they can then hopefully return to later on. Your goal with the About page is usually to encourage the prospect to join your email list, call you on the phone, or at least contact you by email to ask you for more information. All other actions should be considered secondary to these main goals. So at this point in your relationship with the new prospect, it's not quite as effective to get them to become a fan of your Facebook page or follow you on Twitter, as you then have to start all over again to build trust and engage with them. 
Social media connections are therefore probably best reserved for other areas of the website, such as the blog. One question I get asked a lot at this point is, should we actually have our picture on the About page? The answer is yes. Putting a professional image on your About page, and you'd be amazed at how many photographers don't have a professional looking photograph, it not only shows the prospects what you look like, but it also shows off something about your personality and even gives them a hint of your style and approach to your work. It also adds a certain amount of credibility to your page. There's been research done in fact that shows very clearly that placing images next to marketing copy that makes any kind of claim at all has the effect of increasing the believability and credibility of that statement. It's amazing how much a friendly face can help to reinforce what you're saying in the copy. By the way, if you're not sure what I mean by marketing copy, I'm talking about the actual text on the page, the words we use to tell people about what we do and to get our overall message across. Incidentally, this is one of the reasons why testimonials are so powerful when used in conjunction with an associated photograph from the client giving the testimonial. Nothing beats the added credibility that an image can provide when combined with the text in the testimonial itself. So next, it's very important to let the reader know why you do what you do. Now, this is not as easy as it sounds and is something I frequently work on in depth with my Prime Focus members during our coaching calls. It's really not enough to make generic statements such as, I'm passionate about photography, that's the kind of thing every photographer should be able to say. And clients have a right to expect nothing less than 100% commitment in the first place from the photographer they choose to work with. Instead, it's important to really think hard about what drives you to get up in the morning, day after day, to be a photographer no matter what the circumstances are. For example, some of you probably have jobs working for other people that you might not enjoy as much as being a photographer. I know I used to, and you have that awful feeling when you wake up on a Monday morning and you think to yourself, oh gosh, I really don't want to go to work today. You know, I just don't feel like it, there's too much hassle or stress, and I'm just not looking forward to it one bit. Even when we're doing a profession we love, like photography, there are still going to be days when you feel a bit less than on top of your game, or you maybe feel a little bit tired or stressed, but you still have to get up, put a smile on your face, and hit the floor running with the same passion and enthusiasm you did when you first started out. So what is it that gets you up in the morning and drives you to do that every day? One way to get at this information is to ask yourself how you would feel if someone told you that you had to give it up right now. What would you say if someone told you that from tomorrow you had to do another job entirely? How would you feel? Why be a photographer when you could do something else instead? I know a lot of photographers feel they're not earning the amount of money they would like to, or did when they were working in a traditional job, so there has to be a fundamental driving force that makes you want to do this, and only this, instead of going back to a paying job, working for someone else and having to deal with the stresses and hassles that we, that we exchange for what we've come to think of as more job security, although even that concept is debatable in this day and age. If you find it hard to go through this process on your own, then it might help to have an in-depth discussion about it with a trusted friend or colleague. Another way would be to work with a coach who can ask you the right questions to help you get at the very core of who you are as a photographic artist. And I really can't stress how important this element is. If you can get this one right, then you'll see some great improvement. Number six in the list is to use the power of testimonials to get your message across more effectively. Earlier on, I mentioned that keeping the talk about yourself to a minimum is essential, but that still leaves the question of how do we convey certain key pieces of information to our prospects, especially those things that relate to our unique factors. The answer is to use testimonials. The power of testimonials is simply that your clients can say all the things you wish you could say about yourself, but they can say it with a lot more credibility. Also, not many photographers realize that we have a lot more control than we might think over what goes into the testimonials, and it's quite okay to write testimonials for your clients as long as you get them to approve the testimonials before you use them. That's very important. 
And if you're listening to this, then I'm sure you're a very responsible photography business owner and you wouldn't actually do something like writing your own reviews and then posting them online to look like real reviews from actual clients, but such things do happen. On the other hand, every time I've written testimonials for my clients, I've had no problem at all in getting their permission after explaining that I would love to use the photos from their session or wedding, for example, on the website together with a few remarks from them. I always explain that, since I know they're very busy like the rest of us, I took the liberty of putting something together for them that I thought was appropriate, and just ask if they would be okay giving me permission to use it. No one has ever said no, and, in fact, a lot of times they've come back with something even better than what I was able to write for them, because it's in their own words and sounds even more authentic. This means you can mention specific unique factors in your testimonials without it sounding as though you're blowing your own trumpet. Let's go back to the previous example of the mom who wants to have her children photographed, but they get a little withdrawn and uncooperative when dealing with strangers or unfamiliar surroundings. As the photographer, let's say you have the unique factor of offering in-home portrait sessions for children where they feel more comfortable and less threatened and are just more likely to express themselves in the way you want them to. Therefore, in a testimonial you could refer to these facts but using the voice of your client to express it for you, making it sound much more genuine and appealing for someone new to your business. For example, she could say something like, my children are usually so shy and reserved around strangers and I wasn't looking forward to trying to coax smiles from them in a photography studio that they haven't been to before. But XYZ Photography made the effort to come out to our home where the children were more than happy to smile, play and interact with the photographer to create portraits that we will treasure for a lifetime. Do you see how something like that can be highly effective at communicating your unique selling points without it coming across as being in any way like a sales pitch. Our final tip is the one most photographers seem to be missing out a lot, making sure there's a clear and obvious call to action on the page. If there's nothing concrete for the visitor to take action on, then everything else has been wasted. So remember to include the next step you want the user to take on the road towards becoming a client with you and make it as obvious as you can. In fact, if you think it looks a little too obvious, it's probably about right. Once you start to feel a little uncomfortable with your marketing copy, that's often a sign that you're on the right lines. The action you want could be signing up for your email newsletter, for example, and if you're going to do that, then it's worth having something you can offer them in the form of a bribe or a free gift, such as a special report that they will find useful. It could also be filling out a contact form to request some information from you or simply calling you on the phone to talk with you in person. This is also no time to get skittish or too conservative about the vocabulary you use on the page. By that, I mean I see a lot of what I call prospect killer phrases or very weak calls to action. And I see these in all kinds of places, such as on Facebook or other parts of the website, not just on about pages. This includes phrases such as, if you're interested, don't forget to, feel free to contact the studio. These are simply not strong enough to generate definite action in most cases, and we need to get a little more aggressive here. Perhaps aggressive isn't quite the right word, maybe more specific and forthright would be more accurate. Remember, your prospect is still on the fence at this point, and it's your job to do everything you can to knock her off the fence and get her to take the appropriate steps to get in touch with you, assuming, of course, that she's your ideal client to begin with. So, to recap what we've covered today. First, relate to your client and make her feel that she can get to know, like and trust you. That's very important indeed, and you might already have heard of the know, like and trust factor as an essential step on the path to getting prospects to hire you. Second, keep the talk about yourself to the absolute minimum. Don't be that annoying guy at the party that we talked about earlier on. Third, let her know what she can expect from you, avoiding possible disappointment further down the road if her expectations don't match up with what you deliver. Four, get rid of all the distractions from the page that are not directly connected to the action you want the prospect to take. Number five, 
Know and state why you do what you do. This is perhaps the most important one of all, and it might help to work with a coach to figure this part out. 6. Collect testimonials from every client you work with, and don't forget you can even write your own testimonials as long as the client approves its use. Finally, make sure you have a very clear and obvious call to action to get the prospect to do what you want them to do. So that brings us to the end. I've had a great time presenting this information for you and I hope you got a lot out of it. As you probably realize by now, the things we talked about today are just a very small piece of what I teach in the Prime Focus Lifetime Mentoring Program. So now is the time to sign up and become part of our great community of photographers and take back control of your online marketing. So until next time, all the best to you and I wish you continued peace in your business.